Hi, I'm Thais Coutinho. I'm a cardiologist at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. It's my pleasure to talk to you today about sex differences in arterial stiffness and isolated systolic hypertension. This is an abbreviated version of the talk I gave this year, the AHA 2015 in Orlando. Hypertension is the number one risk factor for death and disability worldwide. And there's now evidence showing that hypertension is specifically ominous in women. For instance, the population attributable risk for hypertension in causing several cardiovascular diseases, such as myocardial infarction, stroke, heart failure, or target organ damage, is greater in women than it is in men. And we, when we think of cardiovascular diseases caused by hypertension, we have to think of hypertension control. And there is new data here from Canada showing that hypertension control is indeed worse in women than men. As you can see here, women are two times more likely to have uncontrolled hypertension than men, which is certainly playing a role in the development of these cardiovascular conditions. But to better understand uncontrolled hypertension, we have to think of the role of isolated systolic hypertension. And this is best illustrated by this study here shown, uh, showing data from the United States and Canada. And if you focus your attention on the population of uncontrolled hypertensives older than age 50, you will see that the far majority of these individuals have isolated systolic hypertension, as shown here. If you do the math, you estimate that 50 to 70 percent of all uncontrolled hypertensives older than age 50 have isolated systolic hypertension, which is a disease of increased pulse pressure. And indeed, isolated systolic hypertension is more common in women than in men. As you can see, starting at about age 40, with increasing age, isolated systolic hypertension is more prevalent in women, which tends to be even more exacerbated uh, in the elderly. But to understand isolated systolic hypertension, we have to remember the physiology of blood pressure. Blood pressure can be divided into two components. One is the steady component of blood pressure, which is mean arterial pressure, and the other one is the pulsatile component of blood pressure, which is pulse pressure. And it's important to make this distinction because they have very different physiologies. For instance, the main determinant of, of elevations in mean arterial pressure is actually increases in the peripheral vascular resistance at the level of the peripheral arteries and arterioles. On the other hand, the main uh, um, factor contributing to pulse pressure elevations is increases in aortic stiffness. So they're very different. And this is important because isolated systolic hypertension is a disease of increased pulse pressure with either normal or mildly elevated mean arterial pressure. So how does that work? The aorta is our most compliant artery in the human body, and it serves as our elastic reservoir. So every time the heart beats and generates a pulsatile pressure, the compliant aorta is then able to buffer a, a portion of this pulsatile pressure, therefore containing pulse pressure, containing the pulsatility, and diminishing the amount of pulsatility that is transmitted along the arterial tree all the way to the end organs. On the other hand, if you have stiffening of the aorta, the aorta would then be less able to buffer pressure pulsatility, allowing a greater blood uh, pulse pressure and uh, potentially causing end organ damage as a result. And this is the pathophysiology behind isolated systolic hypertension. And as we think about sex differences in isolated systolic hypertension, this study from Framingham is very uh, helpful in understanding this. Uh, if you focus your attention on the two top graphics and look at the black bars, you will see that the characteristic impedance of the aorta, or ZC, which is, uh, repre it represents the pressure flow relationship in the proximal aorta. In other words, it represents the stiffness of the proximal aorta. And if you take here age 50, which is precisely the age where we start to see more and more isolated systolic hypertension, uh, you can see that uh, after the age 50, the characteristic impedance of the aorta is greater in women than it is in men. Therefore, the aorta is stiffer, is less able to buffer pressure pulsatility, and as a result here, we can see the hemodynamic effect of this. In the bottom graphics, in the black lines, you can see that pulse pressure after age 50 is also higher in women than in men, contributing to the higher prevalence of isolated systolic hypertension in older women. 
Importantly, this increase in pressure pulse activity caused by proximal aortic stiffness is very detrimental in women. We have shown in several studies that in women only, increases in proximal aortic stiffness and pulse pressure are associated with several derangements of the cardiovascular system, such as left ventricular diastolic dysfunction, alterations in ventricular arterial coupling, greater left ventricular concentric remodeling, and greater burden of epicardial and microvascular coronary artery disease, all of which would then contribute to those cardiovascular diseases that we spoke about in the first slide. So as we put it all together, there is now evidence showing that in women, increases in proximal aortic stiffness or decreases in arterial compliance lead to an increase in pulse pressure, which in turn promotes the development of isolated systolic hypertension and poor blood pressure control which in turn will promote target organ damage and adverse cardiovascular events in women. So what do we have to do? It's very important to treat isolated systolic hypertension for this reason. Uh, and this, uh, this is a very good meta-analysis. This is data in men and women showing that treatment of isolated systolic hypertension is helpful for improving outcomes. As you can see, the treatment of isolated systolic hypertension when accomplished can lower the risk for myocardial infarction, stroke, and mortality. So we should really strive to reach blood pressure control in these patients. But the problem that we often face clinically is that this is a very difficult disease to treat. There are patients that have very refractory hypertension and very often have um, um, orthostatic hypotension as well, so they're very tenuous. And I'll explain to you why that happens. If you go back to the original slide about the physiology of blood pressure, we have to understand that the antihypertensive drugs that we currently have available for treatment of high blood pressure, they have been designed to decrease peripheral vascular resistance. They do very little in terms of treating aortic stiffness and, and decreasing pulse pressure. So as a result, these antihypertensives, they are very good at lowering mean arterial pressure. And uh, this is best illustrated here, showing that the conventional antihypertensive treatments are 90% effective in controlling diastolic hypertension, but only moderately effective in controlling systolic hypertension. So as a result, in our patients with isolated systolic hypertension, we have to keep adding drug after drug, uh, which is moderately effective in, in decreasing systolic blood pressure, but ends up lowering mean arterial pressure too much to the point that patients often become orthostatically hypotensive. So this is a very important clinical conundrum that we still don't have a perfect tool for. So going forward, what do we need in order to better treat isolated systolic hypertension? And this is for men or women. Uh, we need to target the underlying pathological mechanism, which is arterial stiffness. And in terms of the drugs that we have currently, we know that diuretics and beta blockers are not very good at uh, decreasing arterial stiffness. And we know that calcium channel blockers, ARBs, ACE inhibitors, or combinations of these are a little bit better. They're not perfect, but certainly a little bit better in terms of targeting arterial stiffness. But going forward, we have to look forward to the clinical trials that are ongoing. Um, there's a clinical trial now going on in France, the SPAR trial. This will be the largest clinical trial on this topic, and it will hopefully give us the definitive answer of which of the hypertensive drugs that we have uh, is the best in terms of treating, treating arterial stiffness, which will have direct implications on isolated systolic hypertension. But most importantly, going forward, we need to open our minds to new targets, and we need to target the underlying mechanism of this disease, which is uh, the abnormalities in the structure of the large compliant arteries. Uh, to this end, uh, we look forward to the results of the parameter study, which is ongoing in the UK. They are testing this new drug, uh, LCZ696, which is a combination of an ARB with an endopeptidase inhibitor, and they're treating uh, older patients with isolated systolic hypertension. We look forward to the results of this trial in the next few years as well.